Oh, what are you doing? Hey! Oh! Hold oh, on. Cameraman, you alright? This is a special edition episode of Mr. Basketball Live with none other than the Bone Collector! What's up, y'all? This is Mr. Basketball Live. What's up, y'all? This is Mr. Basketball Live. Let us know, how, how did that name even come about? Why are you named the Bone Collector? Um, that's an interesting story. Um, I got the name at, the, at actually where we are now, at Rucker Park. And um, I can remember the game, and it happened like right there. I made a guy fall, and he hit the gate. And everybody- he hit the gate? He hit the gate. Everybody ran on the court. He was hurt, he was laying down. They called the paramedics. The paramedics came right in the front and then took him away. Second game. A guy's guarding me, he reached for the ball, I threw it through his legs, he broke his finger, the paramedics took him out. The next game, the paramedics were just waiting because they assumed that I was going to make somebody get hurt again. And my friend was like, as he was on my team, his name is David Seals, he was like, yo, I got the perfect name for you, yo. Bone Collector, like the movie, but you actually do it in real life. There's a killer out there, he's laughing at us. Some people win, some people lose. The game is over. I live for that. I live to just destroy whoever's in front of me. And if you got a name, I need that name. It's like it's like being a superhero. You fight against somebody and you win, you take all his power. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, a lot of people don't really know anything about your path. Like, where did you come from? Like, how did you, mm -hmm. how did, like, you know, how did you even get to Rucker Park? Well, my story was interesting because I was in a serious situation in California where I got incarcerated for a little bit. And out of high school, it was difficult for me to move past that, you know, being that I was going away from the sport and away from civilization for three years. And in jail, I saw the N1 mixtape for the first time. And I saw Skip to my Lou and all these guys, right. and I was like, whoa, these guys are the best players in New York, and this is on a big stage. I think I can perform there, and I think I can do well there. Right. And so I took my last little bit of money, and I flew out to New York, one-way ticket, JetBlue. Wow. $99, when they used to be $99. Right, 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 right. And I stayed out in New York for about nine months. The hard part is, I had to live homeless for about, you know, nine months. Wow. And by the time the summer came around, uh -huh. I still did my due diligence, worked on my skills, and kept myself neat and tidy, so I was able to perform when I got there. And then the summertime hit, I came out and just played pickup ball. Everybody, rest in peace, Escalade, Ali Mo, Rod Strickland, all these guys were out here, sitting in the crowd, and I was blown away to see NBA players right. in, my, in person. I'd never seen that, right. you know, so that really just like, you know, was the, you know, the beginning. Just the, the, the start of everything for me. But that's crazy though. So like, you didn't know it was gonna work out. You just flew and just mm -hmm. hoped for the best, huh? Yeah, um, well, you know, I, I believe God had it already ordained for me. Right. And he didn't, I knew personally, I wasn't wise because I was young, but I felt like I didn't need to be there. Right. You know, and it wasn't because of any other reason than I wanted to pursue something with the sport that I love. So right. Right. I chose to just go at 110% and you can't fail, you're gonna learn something either way. So I figured you're gonna win. It's a win-win. Right.
see what they had. They had to wait till we seen it, showcased it, and developed it to realize, hey, that boy can really play. Why not the NBA? Why why street basketball? Um, to be honest, I when I had my opportunity to go to the NBA in 2007, uh, it was great. I was with the Orlando Magic, and that was one of the great experiences for me to sit there and learn from those guys and and, and kind of be a student of the game. And I had a chance to, you know, when the D League first opened up um, out in Roanoke, it was the first team, one of the first teams I played on, and. Uh, you know, I had a different stints, and you know, from there, um, you know, summer league to the Globetrotters and so on and so forth, and they pushed for me to get there. I wasn't very disciplined, though. You know, to, to be a professional, you have to be disciplined. So, you know, they're doing three a day. They're getting up in the morning at six, and then they're hitting the pool at, you know, one, then they're in the, on the court at five, and I'm, you know, being a street ball player, I'm used to just going to the court, not yeah, stretching, getting out, just thing. doing my thing. Right. So. You know, it, it was just a learning experience for me to see the difference between being a professional and a streetball player. And I pursued it um, to the point where it got me some professional looks, but I never really aspired to go to the NBA. I just wanted to be a good basketball player. So, you know, at the end of the day, you know, I think that's the overall, you know, goal for me in, in general. And then now, the interesting thing is, because I'm constantly playing, even at my age, they're giving me the opportunity to try to get a 10 day now. So what, what, are you going for it? I'm, I'm never going to stop. Of course I'm going for it. Uh, that's what's up, man. That's yes, what's up. That's what's up. Man, there's a very interesting story about uh, that situation. When I got here in 2001, uh, I had the privilege within the next two years to watch Kobe Bryant play a streetball game with my own two eyes. And that's something I will never forget. Right. I remember he walked back, he walked through here, he had security, these guys looked like they was with the president. They were, <laughs> everybody was walking like this. <laughs> Kobe was going through like, hey, just pointing at everybody. And I, I was sitting like right in the middle and he was like, Bone, what's up, man? And I was like, you know me? And he said, yeah, of course I know you. You bone collector from Record Park. And that moment alone, was monumental for me. Like, uh, uh, yeah. balls like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's different, man. Like, yeah, a whole different person when it comes to the street ball, anything. Always take care of the, the kids out here. Shout out to Bone Collector. Yo, the success from being here years back. I knew you, just met you, saw you dribbling. I didn't think you was that nice. But from seeing what I saw then to now, I salute you, I congratulate you. The success went from what you knew here and you took it out to different worlds and made it a big dream. I'm one of your biggest supporters and I tell you that all the time. I support you and I thank you for showing me that your talent can take you to different places. You are that man in my heart. Salute, DJ Loved One, Lean Brothers, I congratulate you. Where did you get your handles from, man? Like how some of the moves I've seen Crazy <laughs> bananas! Like, wait, you, where did you get? Who inspires you? Like, um, my father. My father used to take me out to the courts. He inspired me to do every move I'll do today. Everything that you see, I've innovated and made it my own. <clears throat> but he showed me the techniques. And one thing I want to tell you, kids, I'm gonna look into the camera when I tell you, handles and having handles does not start with the move. It starts with your quickness and your footwork. So. A lot of times you may watch my videos and you may enjoy and you want to see you know how the move is done always pay attention to my footwork and my change of direction because that's the main thing that's going to get you what you guys know as shifty um just a food for thought for you guys coming from me i mean i've been dribbling for a long time so hopefully it helps you there you go that's the, that's the secret right there we're giving you the secret i find it kind of disrespectful when you talk about these basketball legends, you don't say the name Bone Connector. Watch this move right here. You see what I'm talking about? Watch this move right here. <laughs> pretty much the best handle, you know, on the streets, you know, and Kyrie has the best handle in the NBA. Uh, compare y'all games. Um, I don't really do comparisons. Kyrie is playing for a championship every year. 
and I'm playing just to make sure people laugh. Right, right. Um, but on a serious note, um, our moves are very similar, and I personally know Kyrie. Shout out to Kyrie Irving, Duke Blue Devils, baby. Um, our moves are unique, and interesting enough, Kyrie Irving, you know, gave me a nice shout out and told people that before there was any Kyrie Irving or anything that people yeah, like I've now, seen that. there was bone collector. A lot of people ask me, do I got more handle than this man? Hey, we was doing an ABC before I was even born yet. You did it before this even Was you came watching in. me do it? Of course. Hey, has he? Come on, man. You know you the real deal, man. Hey. The kid in Toronto and the kids from, from Canada feel like it, it's almost staged. It's almost, your, your handles is too good. Like, you know, yeah. people are falling on purpose. Address that. One thing I want to tell the kids, especially in Canada, if you think it's a game and you want to know if it's real or not, I will be in Canada to show you. And you will learn two things that I'll tell everyone. you either going to respect it or you're going to get collected. <laughs> I love that. Okay, Mr. Basketball Live will bring in Bone Collector to Canada. Okay, make sure y'all come out. Y'all want to see the real? This is it right here. So I've seen a lot of videos of you in the uh, Captain America suit. That's Bone Collector, obviously, yes. right? And uh, the professor's in the Spider-Man suit. So my first question to you is, is it, doesn't it get hot in that suit? Like, <laughs> how do you cross guys over in a suit? Well, you gotta have nasty handles, number one. Right. Um, how do you see? see? Like, can you see? Yeah, I see. It's just a mask, got the eyes open. Right. But right. Um, it's definitely blazing hot, and you definitely only can go out one time in it. <laughs> and whatever you're gonna get, you gotta go with. collector do on a day-to-day -day basis like what does your life consist of like when you're not videoing and you're not breaking ankles who is bone collector who is bone collector when I'm not breaking ankles and and, and playing ball I'm a father I have two kids um, I'm really into my religion uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian and I allowed myself to live a life that I didn't like you know much in, in, in my early years so my relationship with God is what I focus on daily. You know, I, I kind of give myself that space to let God move me in the right direction. So those are the things that I, I assume, you know, a lot of people want to know, what do I do in my off time? I'm also a great artist. I, I draw, as you can see in the stuff yeah, on my body. Tatted. Yeah, I drew all of the stuff that's on me. So I draw in my spare time. Um, I like to read. And I watch, I watch cartoons. I don't really watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of old school cartoons. Ren and Stimpy, yeah. um, <laughs> Beavis and Butthead, <laughs> He-Man, and right. you know, the Smurfs, right. and old school. I like a lot of old school cartoons. Right. And then, um, and I work out a lot. So you coach right now. Mm -hmm. Where do you coach at right now? Uh, right now I'm an assistant coach at San Gabriel Academy, and I'm a player development coach, actually, where I teach the players how to work on their individual skills and their IQ, mental IQ. That's a high school? Yeah. Okay, so do all of your high school kids have handles? Like, do you teach them the handles? Yes, I have what we call them, they're called my little dragon. Because <laughs> they all breathe fire. And oh. we have, there's about five of them. They're part of the Team Ankle Breaker squad. There's okay. about five of them, and they are serious. I'm, I'm grooming them. about to play one-on-one. -on -one. This guy keeps telling me he's Mr. Basketball, but I'm Mr. Bone Collector. He is not winning. Round one, fight. Oh, yeah. 
Round two, fight! Final round, fight! <laughs> okay, so you are one of the most uh, famous basketball players uh, to do it right now, and you've got lots of fans all over the world. Uh, let your fans know where they can catch you, where they can see you. A lot of people want to see you play. When's the next time they can get at you? Where do they go? If you guys, big shout out to all the fans who support me across the world. If you guys want to see me play and you want to see some of my new content, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Bone Collector Unlimited. Um, if you guys want to see my current events and the things that I'm doing now, personal training, games, celebrity events, uh, you can always follow me at Bone Collector 6 on Instagram. Oh, you'll be able to see everything I'm doing, all the current events. And please feel free to DM me if you have anything going on in your personal life because my relationship with God has me in a position to mentor and help people and that's what I truly, truly am passionate about. So make sure you check me out. Good to see you guys. That's Bone Collector. Honestly, thank you so much for doing Appreciate the show. Um, Bone Collector is one of the most humble, the, the coolest guys you'll ever meet. Uh, very, very happy, very, very humble uh, to be here and for him to be doing the show. Uh, definitely hit him up, subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, thank you for tuning in, Mr. Basketball Live. <laughs>